doing? Love I'm doing up. great. So L.E., Justin, right? Good morning. Yes, correct. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining me to talk about love virtually. Uh, great, great comedy. I loved it, you guys. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Well, Ellie, tell us about love virtually. The metaverse is here, and how do we use it to find love? I'm I'm an old generation next guy, so this is this is intimidating. This movie, it really is. <laughs> I'm still single. <laughs> See, <laughs> um, well, the metaverse is sort of here. Um, it's we're, we're trying we're trying to get the metaverse off the ground in this reality, in the sort of alternate reality, or somewhere in the near future uh, reality of. Love virtually, the metaverse has been popularized and adopted, and that's where uh, that's where everyone spends time socially and uh, and searches for love. The future is now, isn't it? <laughs> right. I mean, to answer your question, you could go to Club Kaboom, which is the uh, hottest club in the metaverse, and perhaps you could meet someone there. But I think that also, you know, the metaverse is an extension of the other ways that people meet each other electronically. You know, you have two uh, characters in the movie, uh, the Stephen Tobolsky and Sherry Terry, they meet each other on a website called Cheater, which is a, you know, it's a- um, Ashley Madison. It's a, <laughs> right, it's an anonymous <laughs> alternative to your loveless, loveless marriage. And that's just text-based, right? But they're still, they've met each other through some remote sort of technology. And, and actually the truth is Ellie could tell you how to meet someone uh, in that capacity because he met his wife on TikTok, so. Um, you know, <laughs> it is possible to meet online. <laughs> and what are the challenges in blending live action and 3D animation in your feature? Uh, there are a lot of challenges. <laughs> it was a very, it was a very complicated process uh, in terms of shooting, in terms of editing. Um, the film was shot with actors essentially all in, in, in different places for most of the movie. So a lot of the actors never actually met each other on set. Um, and they were acting off of script supervisors or me reading um, reading other lines. So matching performances, um, even in live action, was was really challenging because you had someone, you know, doing their performance, and then two weeks later, somebody else is doing their performance, and then there's ad libbing that has to be incorporated, and you have to ad lib against somebody else's performance that you haven't seen. So it was it was a massive jigsaw puzzle um, that took uh, took a long time to edit and. Um, and and a lot of uh, creative fixes to to make work. And you co-wrote the co-wrote the movie together. Um, t take me through a typical writing session. How do you guys work together? Um, a lot a lot of long walks. We were in different places when we wrote the movie. I was in Florida at the time, and Cheston was in L.A. Um, but yeah, I think we would both go on long walks, ideate, try to top each other with the most ridiculous ideas and scenarios that could take place in a virtual world. And then we'd sit down and, and uh, either work on our own scenes or reread each other's scenes and kind of check each other's work and rewrite you know each other's uh, each other's writing. Um, and then sometimes we'd battle out you know we'd have to battle out uh, whose idea um, and you know would make more sense. And uh, but yeah, it was a fun experience because there wasn't a whole lot to do at the be very beginning of the pandemic in April 2020 when we wrote this thing. And Chester, did you have inspiration in the most bizarre places for this movie when it came to writing? You know, look, the, it started out just with bizarre ideas. Like, I mean, I think the first idea, once we had settled on, okay, this has to be something we can shoot during a pandemic and the original script, not including a couple scenes that we ended up filming a year and a half later, only had two characters in any room at any time because we didn't know what the rules would be. And COVID was, you know, we didn't know what kind of crew we'd have to be. So. You know, I, part of the inspiration was framed by, okay, we have to stay within these parameters. And we started with, okay, an online relationship fits that as parameters. So this idea of this, these, these two celebrities who are going to sandbag or reverse catfish to find someone who's interested in something other than their, their, how good looking they are, or how famous they are, or whatever, like that was one ridiculous idea. But some of the other ridiculous ideas that really were expressed in the movie really were things like, I'm reading an article and it talks, I read, remember I read an article one day about, you know, people were starting to develop like emotional sort of connections to chatbots. And this was before ChatGPT and before the proliferation of AI, uh, you know, so it was kind of very rudimentary chatbots were still pushing people's emotional buttons. So, so we thought, well, okay, let's take that and, and run with it. And, 
you know, it was kind of interesting that, you know, uh, Facebook was still called Facebook when we made this movie. It, it only <laughs> yeah. became, they only changed the name to Meta. And, and, and so the Metaverse was something that was, had the word had been around for decades, but it was not part of the popular parlance. And VR was still just, you know, the uh, Oculus, uh, uh, you know, wasn't called the Meta Quest yet. It was, so we were really sort of um, tapping into to a trend that hadn't quite hit, um, you know, the mass market yet, um, except for through movies like Ready Player One, things like that, but in terms of the, like consumer market. So I think we just kind of like picked up on things that were the direction things were moving and then we riffed off of them and, and to, you know, based on kind of what we thought, how bizarre or, or ridiculous that those things could be. And Ellie, uh, is there a technique in directing yourself? <laughs> um, the technique is uh, <laughs> making sure you have people around who you trust to, uh, to, to ghost direct and to make sure they, they have your back and, you know, um, that, uh, yeah, I, that's that's the trick. It's very very difficult to direct, to direct yourself. Um, you have to run back behind a monitor and check frame, and so yeah, enlisting the help of others uh, who you trust is, I think, the tr the trick to that. Um, and also just having great scene partners and having uh you know having people that are that are that are great to work with in in the scene uh, also helps. Well, gentlemen, congratulations, and I enjoyed the film very much, and uh, it's very eye-opening, too, and uh, <laughs> I, hope, uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Let's talk again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.